Let's find the slopes of these two lines. And we'll do that using two different approaches. One which uses mainly just the graph, and the other which uses the slope formula. So looking at our first graph, we have a line and we need to find its slope, which means we need to find the rise and the run from any point on that line to another one. So we'll start by choosing a couple of points to work with. And I like to choose points for which we can easily read the values. And these are points that fall right on the intersection of grid lines. So I can see one of those points right here and another one right here. So we really need to figure out how much do we move vertically and how much do we move horizontally to get from one of those points to the other one. And starting at the leftmost point, looks like we move up one square and over five squares to get to the next point. But we have to be careful here. We have to pay attention to the scales on our graph. Moving up one square actually means that we went up by 20 because on the vertical axis, each square represents 20. So we have a rise of 20. On the horizontal axis, each square actually represents three. So moving over five squares actually means we went up 15. So that's our run. So let's write these values down. We have a rise of 20 and a run of 15. Now our slope is just the rise divided by the run. So in our case, that works out to 20 divided by 15. And we could leave our answer like that, but both 20 and 15 are divisible by five. So we can reduce this fraction. 20 divided by five is four and 15 divided by five is three. So our slope is four thirds. And of course we could write this as a decimal, but four divided by three is 1.3333 and so on, which is not the nicest decimal. So we'll just leave it as a fraction. Moving on to the slope formula approach. We have M, which is slope, equals Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. And keep in mind, we really are just doing rise over run here. Y2 minus Y1 gives us the rise and X2 minus X1 gives us the run. So we need two points. One of them we'll call point one and the other we'll call point two. And let's just use the points that we already marked on our graph. Point one is here. It has coordinates of 660 and point two has coordinates of 2180. And it doesn't matter which point you call point one and which point you call point two, you'll get the same answer either way. But I like to call the point on the left point one and the other point point two. So for y2 minus y1, we need to subtract the y value for point two minus the y value for point one. So that's 80 minus 60. And for the denominator here, x2 minus x1, we need to take the x value for point two and subtract the x value for point one. So we have 21 minus six. And 80 minus 60 is 20. 21 minus six is 15. And we've already seen that this fraction reduces to four thirds, which is our slope. Now let's move on to our second line. Again, we need to pick two points on this line and find the rise and the run to get from the one point to the next. So I'll choose points that are easy to read again, points that are on the intersection of grid lines. So negative 440 is a good one. And eight negative 50 is also a good one. Now notice that this time our line is decreasing or going down from left to right, which means we should be expecting a negative slope. And if we look at how much we went down to get from the one point on the left there to the next point, how much did we go down? Well, we could count the squares and realize that in this case, each square is actually 10 on the vertical axis. We could also say that we started at a value of 40 on the Y axis and went down to a value of negative 50 on the Y axis. So if we were at 40 and went down to negative 50, how much did we actually go down? We actually went down 90. So I'm gonna say that our rise is negative 90 because we dropped by 90. And how much did we go over? Well, we started at an X value of negative four and went to an X value of eight. So to get from negative four to eight, you could count the squares, realize that on the horizontal axis, each square is two in this case. But we could also say that from negative four to eight, we had to increase by 12. So there we go, our rise, is negative 90 and our run is 12. So our slope, which again is rise over run, 
is negative 90 over 12. And we can reduce this fraction, both 90 and 12 are divisible by six. 90 divided by six is 15, and 12 divided by six is two. And furthermore, we had a negative divided by a positive, which works out to a negative result. And that's what we were expecting for the slope was a negative result. And I should mention too that you could write this as a decimal. 15 divided by two is 7.5. So you could say that this equals 7.5, but don't forget to write that that is negative. It's an option, it's, it's good either way as a fraction or a decimal. And let's look at the slope formula again here. We have m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, again, I'll call the point on the left point one, and its coordinates are negative 4, 40. And the point on the right here will be point two, and its coordinates are eight, negative 50. Okay, so y2 minus y1, we're going to subtract the y value. So y2 is negative 50, and we'll subtract 40. And x2 minus x1, we'll subtract the x values. We have eight for point two minus negative four for point one. Negative 50 minus 40 is negative 90. Eight minus negative four, well, it's the same as eight plus four, so that's 12. And we've seen that we can reduce this fraction and write it as negative 15 over two, which if we choose to, we could write as negative 7.5. And there we go. Our slope is either negative 15 halves or negative 7.5.